I'm going to teach you how to do standing rolls right now. I have another video up that talks about seated rolls. So a standing roll is very much like a seated roll. So in the seated roll, get our arm down, fingers pointed back, and in a roll, just like this. The standing roll is going to be very much like that, except we'll be starting up here. So to start teaching it, what I do is I say, reach your hand toward the ground, but your legs, your knees are off the ground. Feel that weight on your front arm. Make sure you feel that weight. And then you're going to do exactly the same thing as we did before with the seated roll, only now it's from this kind of semi-standing position. You have to get used to looking down at the ground, though. It's a little frightening at first to look down at the ground. So this arm's extended. Roll over it. So again, you can start from this position. You're now standing, semi-standing position. And you can roll over this arm so it's extended and solid. You can just roll over. As you become more advanced, instead of starting like that, you start standing and reach down to the ground and do your roll. So I start standing, I'm going to reach down toward the ground and do my roll. More advanced yet, rather than reaching for the ground, I'll reach for the ground later once I'm in the air. So I start from here, I have to jump. Do a roll like that. One of the training tools we use is to jump over something. And this is a functional skill. There are times when um, you have to get over something like a wall. My sensei had a story where he had to escape from a dog that was chasing him. And he saw a wall and he had to jump and roll over it. It was better to do that than to try and uh, leap and maybe get caught on the top of the wall. So one of the training tools we have is to jump over something. We start with these foam swords. It's exactly the same role as we do before, except really you have to get your mind around the fact that you're jumping over something. Even though doing your rolls, you're, I'm sure, clearing this height, there's a little mental barrier here. So you jump over, raise it a little bit, and we raise the bar a little bit uh, as we do these rolls, and it gets a little, your mind gets intimidated, remembering that we're we're, but we're just jumping over a foam sword, so if I hit it, I'm going to be okay. And we raise it a little higher as we practice our dives. And so again, I have to realize that this whole time, I've actually been jumping that high. It's just now there's something in front of me that's almost at my waist. It's a little scary. And she raise it a little further. And, okay, now it's looking intimidating. It's at my waist, but still, I just... And I can do this when we get more advanced. We practice with a Joe. So, a Joe, just a stick. And it's now a little scarier because if you hit it, you're going to hit something solid. But still, it's not a wall. But you can clear this. So, we practice this for height of pipers. And the other thing we do is we practice for distance. So, we'll set up a couple of foam objects. And set up a little bit of ways apart. Dive over up. And again, you realize if I hit this, I'm just going to land on foam. But still, there's a mental part of this, part of Aikido. A lot of Aikido is becoming uh, aware of the mental aspect of it. We'll just move it further apart. Further apart.